So this is going to be a tribute video to the memory of my grandmother, my paternal grandmother. This was my father's mother. And um, I simply called her Momo. She passed on from this life to the next life, the spiritual realm, August 11, 2021. And um, she was one of the funniest people I ever knew. She was hilarious. And uh, she was one of my first uh, culinary arts and cooking teachers. Um, she told me how to carry uh, cups from the bottom and plates from the bottom. And um, she was a very, very uh, cool person in my life. Um, I don't know where to really start, but this is a photo that my mom had of the only picture I really have of my grandmother. She didn't want people taking pictures of her, but this was at my baptism. And I have the same picture in this um, memorial necklace I wear with me. Whenever I go somewhere for spiritual reasons, love reasons, um, I also have um, in this box, she had a cross on at my baptism, and I have this cross um, that she actually had on at my baptism. This is one of her belongings she had with her before she uh, transitioned. And um, this is a mask that a few members of her family, um, even though I never met them before until then, you know how some black people do, don't show up to the funeral. But anyway, they had a mask made. Purple was her favorite color. Her name was Inez. And so um, I'm going to talk about this, not just to share the memory of my grandmother, but talking about grief and honoring our loved ones and our ancestors is a way that, you know, we cope with death. We accept death for what it is. And... Um, we, we move on in love. And um, I think I was very close to my grandmother. My grandmother was my father's mother. I even, uh, not going to show all this stuff, but I even have her license, her um, driver's license, her identification card, and my father's. Um, I was with my grandmother when she transitioned. And... Um, I called my mother late that night because she was acting a little strange. Um, I was hearing and experiencing spiritual things I had never even imagined before. And uh, my mother came by, whatever, and after uh, the hospice nurse left because we was at my grandmother's house, I was real sleepy that night. and. I went to sleep and I woke up in this cloud environment. I swear, I promise you. My grandmother whispered to me and she said, Tutu, I'm leaving. That's what she called me. And um, that next morning I got up, I went over to the living room, which is maybe 10 feet from the day bed where I was sleeping on. And I felt her chest, I cut a limp on and she was gone. She had a glow on her. I didn't take pictures of her, but she had a glow that on one of my other videos, you will see what I'm talking about. Uh, in Luke chapter 10, Moses had a glow and he was in the presence of God. I truly believe that she had came in contact with a power, a force, or a spirit that was not of this world because she had a glow that filled that whole room. I can't even describe it. She was ice cold to touch, but she was at peace. She wasn't afraid of dying. We talk about death all the time. But I want to share with... Um, my TikTok, my Facebook, my uh, social media uh, fan club, you know, I have, um, I have a quilt, a blanket that my deceased father made for my grandmother. Um, as a matter of fact, I slept with it the um, night she transitioned, she passed. And I put it on her after she was transitioned, you know. And um, 
I brought the clothes she wanted to be buried into the funeral home and I kept this quilt because this quilt um, serves a very special purpose in my life. Um, my father made this quilt and he's also deceased. And um, on this quilt is our family tree. My last name was supposed to be Jones when my father was incarcerated so he couldn't sign my birth certificate. And uh, he always knew who I was. I always knew who I was and all the other kind of stuff. But this quilt is very significant because my name is on this quilt. My grandmother's name is on this quilt. And my father made this quilt when he was in prison. And um, right here says grace and truth. And has peace. And... Um, you see how we're all connected on this quilt. Right here, it says, Red, Madam, Inez, Carlton, David, Derek. That's my grandmother's name and her two children that she had. And my name is on here. Because I was David's son. And I am David's son. Um, let's see. If I can find my name. Because my grandmother's mother's name was Lee Esther, And underneath is my grandmother's name on this quilt. And my name is on this quilt as well. Here it is. My father's name was David, and so my birth name was Carrington. And so David was my father, and he was my grandmother's middle child. And um, I, I have this quilt with me, and I'm going to keep this quilt with me because uh, it's very special to me. This is um, like a family tree or whatnot or what have you. And um, I occasionally, when I made up my bed a few times, I put it on top of my bed, but then I put it on the, the baseboard of my bed, the backboard or whatever, the headboard. And then I said, well, I don't want to get messed up room, so I just fold it up and put it in the ornament that my father also made. He was um, a man who stood six foot five, I think. And um, he knew how to make and sew and do all kind of stuff. But anyway... Um, this is a tribute to my grandmother. I'm trying to find something uh, I can remember about her that was hilarious. I remember we were sitting down watching Law and Order Special Victims Unit. That show has been on for over 25 years. I'm 27 years old this year. And so um, my grandmother loved that show. All of a sudden she cut the TV off, she said, Put on shoes, we gotta go over to uh Pie House. And I say, What's wrong? She said, Rabbit died. Shh, don't say nothing. And I'm like, What are you the investigator? So we she get in her black car, Pontiac, and she back out the driveway and she drive all over there. It's not even a mile away, y'all. It's like maybe a hundred feet from her house. She go over there and they live in this trailer house and she say, sit right here. And then she walked back there. And then she walked back uh, up here and uh, she tell them the news or whatever. And so then I guess they call it the funeral home because the family funeral home, uh, what was told to me, um, Thelma Carpenter married a Charles Mackey who started the Charles Mackey funeral home and she married into that family. So everyone who was a Jones, everyone who was a Carpenter, a, Mal a Mackey, went through Charles Mackey Funeral Home. Now it's owned by people who just um, work at the funeral home and who pay the tax at the funeral home. But once upon a time, it was a family-owned funeral home. And those are my grandmother's people. But anyway, we drive back to um, her house. And I'm like, so you have, you, you're the investigator? You, you tell people when somebody didn't die? And she's like, uh, they had to, you know, make sure she was pronounced dead or whatever. And I'm like, oh, my God. Funerals was our hobby 
And we talked about death a lot. It was it wasn't sad though. You you wouldn't believe it. We I remember we went um to this person's funeral, the viewing. And if we couldn't make it to the actual funeral, we'll go to the viewing and view the body or whatever. So we drove up to the church and we walked in and we walked all the way down to the altar. And this when I was a kid, so everything looked real huge and big. It was a Baptist church. This church was built in like 1900 something. And so um, we get to the altar or whatever and she all in the casket. Well, I see the swelling that went down. But he sure got good insurance. Yep, they did a real good job too. The embalming process real good. All right, let's go. And I'm just like, how do you interpret all this? And I'm like, that's what, you know, we spent a lot of time doing, but we also used to cook and throw down in the kitchen. I've been to Berkeley, California, East Coast, or is that West Coast? And I've been to Washington, D.C. Nobody can cook like my grandmother. My grandmother, you know, is cooking in heaven, I believe. No one can cook like my grandmother. And um, there's something particular I remember us making. Um, her potato salad is not like anybody else's potato salad. And my potato salad mimics her potato salad. Only um, I really take my time and I try to make sure I do everything the way she did it. Now, a lot of these people now uh, don't care for this, don't care for that in their potato salad. But we use uh, the brown and the golden potatoes in our potato salad. We don't use the red potatoes in our potato salad. I use the red potatoes for smothered arch potatoes. And I did a video on that and it went uh, viral. I think anything viral is like, you know, a thousand views or more, but I don't really do it to go, to go viral. I just do it just to share my love of food and hospitality. So anyway, with my grandmother's potato salad, um, she would use maybe four or five, you know, eggs. Uh, she rinses off all her seasoning, her bell pepper, her celery, her garlic, and uh, she put the eggs in with the peeled uh, golden or the uh, brown potatoes. And, you know, she didn't use a potato peeler. She could cut up a watermelon like a pimp. I'm talking about do all this kind of work and stuff. I got big hands and um, these are pie crust making hands and uh, praying hands. But um, child, and I got my grandmother's uh, inside of the palm of her hands are just like mine, but her hands were kind of smaller than mine's. But she used to cut everything up like a pimp. I'm telling you. She had a, a smooth swag about the way she cut up her stuff. And so um, she make, you know, boil her stuff and everything, you know. And um, she rinse her eggs off with cold water and peel them and everything. She cut everything real small in the palm of her hand. And she put it in a, a Pyrex dish. Because I like to see stuff too. I don't like to just, I don't like surprises. And so she would put, and, and she was born in New Orleans, but she live in between St. Francisville, Port Hudson, and Scotland all her life. It's a little town in that area. But um, Ms. Inez, as people called her, and as she was known, uh, she would tell me, now Tutu, go get the mustard, go get the mayonnaise, go get the garlic powder, the onion powder, the Tony Saturate, the accent seasoning, the sugar, the pickle relish, and uh, bring me a knife and a paper towel. She moved fast in her prime. And so everything she showed me how to do, I learned from her. And so um, we would be making up the potato salad, you know, and she would take a teaspoon and she would uh, put a little in the palm of her hand and she would taste it. And then she would let me taste it in the palm of my hand. And so then she would say, go get the dish towel, wring it out and wipe her hands. And uh, we'll top the top of the potato salad with a little parsley for presentation. We'll put it in the refrigerator. We made potato salad with Oh my goodness, we made potato salad with barbecue. We made potato salad with spaghetti. We made potato salad with beans. It's a Southern delicacy, especially when you're black folk or you, you know, uh, in the black family any kind of way. You know what I mean? So that's how we made our potato salad. <clears throat> but we will add a little sugar to it at the end. <clears throat> Cut up maybe one small garlic, you know, 
two stalks of celery, chop it real small, real thin, uh, fourth of a bell pepper, you know, slice it and chop it real thin, mix the mustard and the mayonnaise, but not too much mayonnaise. I don't like no yellow potato salad, you know, and you don't want it soupy either. And so for me, I have to make a habit to make sure I chop my potatoes a little small because I have big hands. And so my measurements are real big. And so she like her small. And so, you know, but now these restaurants, they wouldn't pass the test because everybody don't put the love in their potato salad. These restaurants now, they making some goddamn uh, smushed up potato salad and I'm not with it, you know, and it's a difference. Everybody don't, you know, do everything the same. So uh, the way my grandmother taught me how to cook, you know, it's just best that some of the things that I hold dear to, I make it for myself because I really know how to cook. And so her potato salad stood out. Her cornbread dressing stood out. I'm not going to tell y'all people how to make my grandmother's potato salad. That's the family secret that she passed on to me and my mambo, my culture. Um, she had a way of doing everything. And I remember one time, uh, and this is probably hilarious. This is just the kind of person she was. We was dropping off uh, her her uh, boyfriend, her domestic partner's auntie. And so she, I don't think she stopped driving or whatever. Her name was Aunt Honey. She's deceased now. And um, she said, go put all her stuff in her house. And she went with me or whatever because we went to the store to LeBlanc's and it was open way up. And Zachary, you know, old people get up early. And um, I think she gave me like $10 for helping her with up. You know, I've always tried to be respectful. Old people, my grandmother told me, you know, too, too, baby, do. Don't say that's old people. And so, you know, uh, I just try to, you know, hold on to that because I really, 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 really try my best to love and respect my grandmother for who she was. Not because the Bible says respect your elders or anything like that. I genuinely love my grandmother. I cried like a baby, hyperventilated when she passed. My heart was broken. It was really broken. It really hurt more than an ass whooping. It it just, it was like somebody took something out of me and no one can help me. I had to pray to God to help take this, this hurt and this pain away. But I'm at the point now where I can accept death for what it is appreciate the life she had and the life that she continues to live and exist because I believe that every spirit of God will be reunited with God. And so that's why I leave it with that. I believe there is life and there is a world beyond this world and God is in control of that world. Um, so we was with Aunt Honey and she had said, um, she let the doctor talk, her, the, her titties off. I ain't, cut, I ain't cutting my titties off. I'm like, what? She was just... She was just different. She was so hilarious. You know, um, I said, um, I'm trying to lose weight, Momo, whatever. And she said, okay, I can see you lose weight. Then my weight would get back on me. It might be high school, middle school. She said, Tutu, I done seen you. Then grew your titties back. I'm like, I can't even, I can't even play. I can't even get mad with you. I can't even play with you. She's just being herself. Don't mean no harm. And I had a different kind of love and devotion to my grandmother. I remember she kept a lot of kids because she was a homemaker. She was a a, a green thumb gardener. And um, she was a babysitter for almost 30 something years. It was more than 30 something years. She babysitted up until the year she uh, passed on in transition. But anyway, there was another uh, kid by the name of um, oh, what was his name? Uh I forgot the child name. He's CJ's boy, but I forgot his name. But anyway, me and CJ Aries, but anyway, he bought her a gift. And I was, it wasn't good at the time, but I realized after, you know, reading my word and getting out of the habit of that, because, you know, I really didn't have a really, really present relationship with my father. So my grandmother was the most present um, side of my father's side that I held on to real tight. And it was like a emotional, jealous love. If anybody bought a gift bigger than mine, I would bust out and cry. I sat on my grandmother's lap like a kid for, for Christmas up until my high school year. Up until maybe the junior, senior year of my high school year. Like, I was a grandmother's baby. You know what I mean? And, I mean, that's just, that's the, 
old time country loud you know love we had i remember leading into her transition maybe a week or two weeks before all that because i got the call because i was flipping through my bible uh at the time in 2021 in the summertime and um my mom called me she said you know your grandmother i said no i ain't know she up here i said okay and uh i was flipping through my bible and something stood out to me in uh I believe it was Ecclesiastes 6. And I believe it said there's a time for every season. There's a time to be plucked. There's a time to die. And I'm like, oh, well, let me pack a bag. Let me go to my grandmother's house, you know. And so she cussed out everybody in the hospital because, you know, she just needed oxygen or whatever. There's so many politics that disturb my spirit with people who need oxygen. But because um, they don't, they're not at a certain level or they don't have a certain kind of you know, health insurance, they don't give them the oxygen. So anytime she gets short of breath, she just calls the ambulance and she rides to the hospital, she gets some oxygen and she's good, but she had kidney failure. And so when she made it to her house, I said, well, I'm here. And um, I remember one day uh, when I was there, you know, you go to your grandmother's house and it's like going to a country hotel. You don't need to bring no expensive clothes or nothing. Everything is free and it's always, there's, she have a whole bunch of denim throwback jackets and pants and undershirts and t-shirts, you know, all kind of clothes you could fit at, you know, my grandmother's house. But um, anyway, uh, and they don't use no alarm in the country either. You know, where she lived in the country, there are horses going up and down the street. See all kind of stuff. Uh, fish market, maybe about two or three miles down the road. Uh, but she yelled my name and she said, to tell you up. And I'm like, I am now. And she said, well, uh, good morning. And I said, good morning. And she said, um, I want you to fry me an egg, but I don't want you to turn it. I don't want you to stir it. And I said, okay, so now you want me to participate in some goddamn chopped. <laughs> this is the stuff she would do. And so I heated up the cast iron skillet, you know, and I put it on like a medium low fire, maybe a four or a three. And I put um, a little butter in the pan. I let it melt. And then um, I seasoned the egg lightly or whatever, you know, because she mostly in her later years, she mostly tried to only eat things that would not worsen her kidney disease. Um, so she would eat very lightly. I'm talking about cottage cheese, uh, clear drinks, uh, eggs, uh, vegetables, you know, things that are organic and good for her, not things that would hurt her. Um, and so um, I pulled the egg in there and it began to sizzle and whatnot. And so in my head, I say, you don't want me to stir it. You don't want me to turn it. And so here I am with a 71 year old cooking champ and here I am being tested in the kitchen and so I took that motherfucking skillet and I flipped it and then she said she wants some rice on the side I said okay so I had to boil some rice on the side no rice cooker because she don't believe in that and so I bought her salsa I put the uh, french fried egg right there the rice on the side and a spoon and I said that's how you want she said yes sir there you go and I said, Lord, have mercy. I told her, I said, Mama, I'll do anything for you, but you know I don't cut grass. They call it being a house cat or whatever you want to call it. But I do not like cutting grass. I don't like it. Grass get all up on you. The sun get all on you. And I don't mind the sun because I'm melanated. And that's where, you know, I get the melanated blessings from. But, uh, oh my goodness, my, my scalp started itching. And the sweat start going everywhere. And it just, oh, it just works on my nerves. It really does. I don't do cutting grass and I don't go up in attics because I don't want to fall. And I just feel very uncomfortable in the attic. I've seen too many documentaries and stuff. People get killed in the attic and that's not going to be my story. But um, I'm trying to see what else could I say on this tribute video. I remember um, when I got baptized in this picture. I was singing in the uh, the children's choir on the day of my baptism. You know, 
I really wasn't singing. I can sing now and everything because of things I've been through and because of the way God has touched me and all this other kind of stuff in my life, I know how to sing now. But back then we was just singing alone. You know what I mean? There's a difference between being anointed and called to do something and just going along with it. You know, so we were just singing alone. And so I saw, I felt in my spirit, ah, I, cause our church where I was baptized in Mount Olive, you know, Pastor Reverend Miller Jackson III, he's a real one. Uh, he baptized me. Um, the door swung open. I saw this small frame uh, dress, skirt woman. And I don't know if she had on boots or whatever. And so I told her I'm a baptism or whatever. And so, you know, she's the type of person who say, well, I don't know if I'm going to make it because more than likely, she don't really go many places. You know what I mean? And so uh, I seen her walk through the door and I just lit up. Every time I see my grandmother, I would lit, I would lit up. She surprised me when she went to my middle school commencement ceremony and I was walking in and they had us holding, uh, had a male, female, I was a male and they had a girl, female hands on each other like this with all that heteronormative bullshit. But anyway, um, I seen her and I was like, hey, and I didn't know she was going to be there or whatever. My godmother was there and she always show up and everything. My mother, my brother, my stepfather, you know, was there and everything, you know, but, um, my grandma was in my baptism, and this is the picture my, my uh, mom took, and she snapped. And uh, she gave my mom more copy. She burned it, I think. She didn't want me to take pictures of it, but I have this picture, so I can remember what she looks like. And it was a very fond memory. My grandmother was there when I got out of the baptism pool, after they said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and I went back up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I gave my grandmother a hug, and she uh, hugged me. And I got changed in my um, clothes. I had on uh, saints clothes. I had on black and gold. And I sung Wade in the Water. And this woman named Jennifer took my solo, gave it to a daughter who couldn't sing. But we forgive her. We pray for her. Uh, bless her heart. Um, her daughter couldn't sing. It's all right. Um, but after the ceremony, you know, I thank everyone for being there, for coming. And uh, I was now able to get communion. Hey. And uh, my grandmother actually baked me a homemade cake for my baptism. Oh, y'all. It blessed my spirit. Oh. Hey, thank you. Just thinking about it. Glory, glory, glory. But that was my grandmother. You know, I, I, I have so many memories of us cooking and stuff. And I won't share all of them, but um, I'm holding on to those good memories. Even we used to argue and get into it about minor stuff like civil rights, you know, and stuff like that, you know. She'll be like, well, I said, well, where were you in the 1960s when civil rights was going on? Were you marching? She said, no, I was at work minding my business. I'm just like, mm-mm, see, uh-uh, see, uh-uh. Yeah, I know how far to go with you, uh-uh. But anyway, we had some very fond memories, good memories, and um, she's deeply missed. I will try my best and I will always remember her. And um, I'm living, and I, she's living through me. Every time I cook something, she's living through me. There's a way that I just do things. There's a way I plate food. There's a way I, uh, I don't say ration, but I give people a sample of food. There's a way that you serve people. You know, there are two uh, titles in heaven, messengers and servants. And so you have to serve somebody. And so I serve many people food. I serve my grandmother. I serve God. And so um, this is my tribute video for my grandmother. Her name was Inez. I called her Momo. And so uh, she is forever in my heart and she is forever missed. And that's the end of this video. All right.